Hey traders, Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group with your Thursday recap, and uh, all is not lost, I would say, for the uh, for the markets today. I think everybody was kind of expecting a pullback uh, that was in the in the cards. Uh, we didn't get that much of a pullback today. We were down S and P down what about 30 basis points. Small caps went down a little bit further today, but um, you know we got a bounce back today. So kind of a little bit uh, undecided for me, which is okay. Uh, you know, when I'm undecided about the markets, I just trade a little bit less and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. You know, you don't have to be in this market every second of the day. You know, we've caught this rally uh, moving up. We've caught this rally moving up beautifully on the on the break of value. But it look, it's still, you know, I've talked about the last couple nights in these recordings that the, that the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, whenever it gets above 70, it's in overbought territory. And it's kind of an area to take profits and to kind of wait a little bit and be patient, which is half of what you need to be doing uh, in, in trading, especially if you're, if you're trading options. If you're a long-term investor, you know, which I am as well, my 401k plan, my IRA, you know, I'm not really making any major adjustments, but if you're an options trader, uh, you know, I've been taking profits. Uh, I've been taking profits in a lot of things and, and just kind of scaling down and just, uh, you know, waiting for this market to curl back in. I mean, what this tells me here is just, just looking at the chart in front of me, which is kind of what we do all day long and, and, and look at the um, aggressive call activity that we see on the tape. You know, it's just to me, you know, the yellow line that's on my chart is the five period exponential moving average. The blue is the 20. Whatever this kind of comes down when the yellow meets the 20 is usually, and we start to turn, is usually a good place, uh, you know, to kind of say, let's get, get long the market. And you can see that the yellow is way above the blue. So, you know, do I think we're going to just continue to blast off in a straight line? I think we're due for, for, uh, you know, a little bit more of a, I, I'm actually a little bit disappointed because I've been preparing a little bit for this move down and kind of scaling out of positions the last couple of days and saying, okay, let's get this down um, a little bit further just to burn off some of these overbought levels. So uh, we did not finish on the lows. We came right back up where we only finished down. Uh, S&P futures are down 19 basis points. I think SPY is down like nine basis points. Q's not even down that much. If you look at NASDAQ futures, you know, still, Still in overbought territory. Again, I'm waiting for when the when this doesn't is not looking red anymore. We're still right now uh, 78. You know whether these can be considered, um, you know, an evening star pattern. Also, kind of reading into that, you know. Just it's not this this pattern always doesn't mean it's setting up for a reversal to the downside. You could see that we had one here, for example, on this move, and we kind of continued higher. So tomorrow is going to be interesting. We got a three day weekend ahead. So a lot of times three day weekends in trading is, is a chance to kind of take a little bit risk off the table. So I don't know if anybody's really going to be doing a ton of selling, but just like we saw this morning, the option activity was was very light in the first uh, first couple hours of the day. Uh, there was also a Trump speech made midday so maybe the buyers just kind of sat on their hands a little bit you know the, these are the, the the trades that I thought were interesting today and they were seemed very stock stock specific today you know you go back to, to yesterday's activity and the day before you know it, it was a lot more um, a lot more activity to me um, so I would say a smaller quantity of, of aggressive call buying ARNC uh, continues to, to be call buying so that was the one name that I took uh, I actually took two trades today. Uh, so this was a new trade. And then I added, I'm in some long, uh, excuse me, I'm in some January AKS uh, calls already, which I think is a great looking chart. Um, so there are things to that I think are interesting uh, that you could either add to longs. Uh, you look at the chart in AKS and you got nice to find support. I think I, I've talked about AKS uh, earlier this week in a video, but you know, you've got your defined support here of 838 and I'm playing for this to the long side. It has not crossed over. I don't see a buy signal yet. Like I don't see the moving averages cross over the one thing. The So I'd like to see three or four different buy signals on my charts. I saw, I saw one about a week ago when we, when we got back into value um, the week, the monthly value area. Next thing that I want to see is a is a MAC, is a not an MACD crossover, but a moving average crossover on my screens. We haven't gotten that yet, but we are seeing call buying uh, come in here. So very short dated. This was not this was not you know going out real far. This was very uh, just going out to next week. So 
you know, again, I, you know, I was talking about this in the trading room today. You don't always have to buy uh, exactly what's on the tape. I'm in January's because we certainly have seen a lot of January call buying in AKS. And keep in mind, this is an $8 stock. This is also a name that you don't even have to play. One does not even have to play in options. It's so cheap you could just play it in stock. But um, So this was one of the, one of the trades of the day. Uh, the other one is ARNC. This name has just made a huge run, but... Buyers just keep coming into this. Uh, call buyers keep coming into this name. So ARNC, it is extended. There's no doubt about it. That it's a bit overbought. But, um, you know, somebody is looking for further upside in, uh, in ARNC. And I participated. Did not take a huge trade in this one, but uh, wanted to participate a little bit because they came in twice today. I went after the first trade because this is just uh, almost every day we're seeing uh, call buying in, in this name. So this, the first order came in around uh, 230, excuse me, 1253. And then we saw the second big block um, hit the tape at around, uh, right around 240 Eastern. So, those two are probably the most interesting trade of the day. Uh, the bummer trade for me is is ABX. I was in a swing trade in ABX, um, and I don't like to hold name, positions going into earnings. But man, this thing just took off up six percent, and I made a lot of money on that swing trade in ABX. But certainly, I missed the six percent move uh, today in this name. Had real real nice earnings today, and um, I always like to see when call buying when they buy before earnings and buy after earnings, and they were present today and, and buying calls out in in, in March. Um, a couple other names here um you know i just kind of sat on my hands there was some some interesting trades that went up uh, or a few notable trades i would say towards the end of the day aal um big block of march 31st uh calls of course the news was out uh the other day about um about buffett adding more to his positions in in the airlines so uh, AAL, I, I wanted to see if there's a catalyst coming up. Sometimes there's we see a lot of action in options uh, around their monthly PRASM numbers, their uh, their sales figures. Uh, so I will check that out. I so something and maybe a name to keep on your radar. Um, HPE, we saw a call buyer in that name. Um, Auto ADSK, which we've seen uh, call buyers earlier in the week in this name, even though it was only 700 shares, it's kind of a chunky play. ADSK. Uh, so you have to look at the, the price of these one up, um, you know, so a $200,000 trade in this name, as you can see, the price was, was 282 in, in this one. So, um, what else? And then we've seen a lot of Colgate buying. Um, I think some of the position was rolled today in CL, a little bit difficult to tell some of these May 70s went up on the bid side earlier in the day. And then we also saw May 65s trade and we saw August 72 and a half calls trade today. I, again, I did not take that trade either. Um, another trade that uh, caught my attention on the ETF side, ASHR, that's the Shanghai ETF. I know everybody's always focused on FXI, which is the H shares, the Hong Kong shares of China, AH. ASHR is the Shanghai ETF, much different index, and those are known as A shares. So if you look at, every, you know, every day, uh, we kind of go through this at the beginning of the day, Hanks, what the Hang Seng does and what, what Shanghai does, these are completely different indices. Um, you take a look at the, the ASHR ETF. Um, this name, this ETF really did not do much in 2016. I'm on the weekly chart right now. If you remember, Shanghai took off crazy a couple of years ago and then came came down just as fast. And then it spent last year all kind of, uh, you know, digesting the move. So if you look at the daily chart, it is above the 200-day moving average. Um, I did not take this trade. I, I think I'm waiting for something a little bit larger than this. Uh, you know, I was in, I, I tried playing this name last year and it just didn't do anything. It tried to get in to value a couple times and just never really got going but um, it is flashing a buy signal on on the weekly chart and it's starting to get above value so this is something that'll be on my radar uh, and I will be on the look for for more buying uh, more more calls and, and also on the um, on the cash side as well I've got an alert out there um, in this particular ETF this is this I think is the best way to play the Shanghai again not what FXI uh, tracks it differently but um, so so you know sometimes when we see a little bit of, of call action in a name it kind of just goes on my watch list and um, and I'll and I'll look for that repeat activity because this really wasn't that large of a trade notable it was aggressive but 
you know, something for um, if somebody's really going to take a position in an emerging market, uh, you know, a whole segment of the market, I want it to be a bigger uh, position because just like with the S and P, you know, we don't look at or I don't look at 2,000 share contracts of the S and P, you know, of the whole index, really, really small considering how big and how large um, the S and P is, right? So. Um, that was the the activity of today again lesser than than normal and i think for the major indices i talked about the q's i talked about s p um iwm as well iwm seems to be kind of trailing on days like this again it hasn't really broken broken down yet i'm just a little bit un, undecided in some of these areas and um you know, maybe if we get a you know a couple more days of a of a of a pullback, I'll be I'll be a little bit more constructive. Um, in terms of the Fang stocks, I really haven't talked about the Fang stocks in the last couple of days uh, on, in these videos because that's not really where the action is at. I will pay attention to the Fang stocks. You know, every day I put out levels to watch um, where I really care in things, and they're just not really going off. Um, and it just doesn't seem like there's momentum in, in any of these names today. So when there's nothing really exciting to go about, you know, I know some people when they, when they, when they shoot these videos, that's all they talk about is the FANG stocks. There's so many other things that are going on in the market. I will only really pay attention to, to Amazon and Google when they're really starting to, when there's momentum uh, that's going on. And the, this last week, it just, for me, hasn't been an interest point. Uh, one thing I, I will note, and, and I did take off today my Amazon bull put spread today. That was a huge winner. Uh, we took that trade off. That was the Amazon. Uh, I bought back the March 795, 790 bull put spread. Um, I sold that originally a couple weeks ago for $1.72. And I bought that back for 48 cents. So mission accomplished. Uh, great trade in Amazon. I put that trade on right after earnings. Uh, we've got a lot of questions about Amazon today in, in the trading room. I would say right now it is above value. Um, it may be a trade that I look to put on some type of a call spread. Uh, we're right at this uh, this recent high of 847. So you got two levels to watch. You got one on the upside, which is basically just $3 away. And then you've got your defined support of 840. So I'm looking at maybe taking a small shot in, in, in Amazon, you know, going out long term and probably using a call spread, considering that we've got this defined support of 840. Um, I think I would rather be a little bit late and make sure that we get above this, um, this previous high um, for, for breakout territory. So that's the one fang name that um, I'm really looking at. Uh, the other thing that I noticed too, at the end of the day, um, Google did reclaim the value area. It was kind of uh, finding some resistance the last couple of days, and it did close above value. So again, um, not to say I'm not trying to discount any of these names, but I put out alerts every day where I care about this, where I think there's momentum in the names, and um, you know they're they're just not hitting, uh, you know they're just not showing breakout level with with volume yet, but. It goes in phases. It rotates. Sometimes there's a week when these names just don't trend up, and then another week where things then all the buyers come into these names. So um, for now, I sit on the sidelines in these names. So thank you for watching tonight's video, and have a great day, Friday.